way. Right. So, do you want to have a tap? Have a tap. Yes. You, you, you'll soon. You'll soon work out. Right. These are not modern tools, are they? No. But then I guess this tells us that actually people have known about cleaving wood for a long time. This isn't new technology. Is no, it? no, no. Prehistoric. I mean, we, we don't know. 10, 20,000 years. Cleaving the wood like this means it splits along its natural grain and keeps its strength. But it also changes the flexibility of the wood dramatically. Let's imagine this now was one of the pillars supporting our bridge. The problem here, remember, is flexibility because the road deck is so long. When it gets hot, it expands and it moves out this way or it shrinks back this way when it gets cold and that needs flexibility. It'll just snap the pillar. With these splits in it, I mean, this is, this will bend as much as you like, but because we've left the same amount of wood in it, the same amount of stuff, it's still just as strong at holding things up. There's as much to work under compression. I feel a test coming on, with two pieces of timber exactly the same size. Right, what I have here is my unique and custom-built flex test rig. This is one of the pillars, okay, represented by this big chunk of wood. And actually, proportionally, it's almost the same as the pillars, width to height. I'm going to test an uncleaved post first. I've added these straws to measure how far it will bend before it snaps. What happens to this? If it flexes, it'll start to knock these little straws out. So, using this winch, I will pull on that wire to apply the same force as if the road deck were expanding out this way on top of my giant pillar. Wish me luck. Now we're making our way towards the first of my little pegs. How far will it bend? Oh, we got one. The tension grows as the deck expands. Oh, no, it's all gone wrong. Well, we've hit three of the little straws, but, oh, yeah, that's not good at all, is it? Now, with the new post, Peter uses wedges to drive a split in it. Will this cleaved timber really bend further than the last post? Right, now, to simulate another hot day at our bridge. The sun comes up and warms two kilometres of steel road deck. It expands and pushes our column. That split in the wood is allowing it to flex. It can still support the same weight from above, but it's coping. Right, that's four. I'm going to see if I can get it back. So this split timber has gone twice as far without breaking as the first unsplit one. But will it return to its original state? As I release the tension, the wooden test pair shows it handles the stress without any permanent damage. All of that flexibility given to it just by this split in it, down to there at the top, lets it bend. It can still support, but now it can bend. Modern woodworkers believe Celtic boat builders use this same principle for their currents. The wooden keel stringer could be split to allow it to bend whilst keeping it strong and sturdy. On the Milau Bridge, concrete, which is usually more like brittle glass, can become more flexible with a split in the right place. I decided to go to the top of one of the concrete piers to find out just how they cope with the deck movement in summer. I wish to have it. The ladder is strong. Four. Climbing the ladder down onto the tiny inspection platform precariously positioned on the tallest bridge pier on Earth was more than scary. A lot more. Ah. OK, I'm assuming there's somewhere down there to attach the harness to. Oh, that's a view. My, that's a view. Oh! <laughs> Mother of God. If I fail, is that an excuse? Right. Oh. Second time, and I brace myself to face the winds and my fear, 245 metres above the Tarn Valley. Ah. OK. Where does this go? Oh, I feel better now. 
Bridge engineer Sylvester Galis explained, as I hung on for dear life, just how the concrete Y shape allows for movement of the pillars. The Y form on the concrete structure yeah. makes the movement easier. So the pile, if you like, is fixed to the deck. It's the deck that's in charge, and the pillar has to move with the deck as it expands and contracts. Great engineering, making concrete bendy. But discussing the concept nearly a quarter of a kilometre in the air wasn't my idea of fun. Thank you very much for explaining it to me. I'm not sure I'm so grateful to you for bringing me here to do it. We could have done this on the ground. In the roasting heat of high summer, when the massive metal road deck expands, these split piers can flex 10 times more than conventional concrete towers. Then as night falls, the bridge cools, the deck shrinks and the giant piers return to shape. Concrete cleaving is just one inspired solution to the many exceptional challenges that the Milad Bridge engineers overcame and rightly celebrated. They wanted to build a bridge that was more than just a link between the two sides of the valley. They wanted to create a structure that rather than detract from, would add to the landscape. A sculpture in a region treasured by France for its natural beauty. And for what it's worth, if you ask me, they did it. Who would guess that to make it they embraced the power of lightning? Were guided by submarine navigation? used a chance discovery from a chemistry lab. Cables prompted by accidents in a German silver mine. And were inspired by a crafty idea from ancient boat builders. The Mila Bridge, a stunning piece of engineering made with incredible style. The brand new series of Richard Hammond's Engineering Connections continues on Sunday at 9. See NatGeoTV.com for exclusive previews. Richard Hammond heads for Hong Kong and finds out how to build an airport at sea in the middle of a typhoon zone. Drop it! Ooh dear. The new series of Richard Hammond's Engineering Connections continues with Hong Kong Airports, Sunday at 9 on National Geographic Channel and HD.